Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this opportunity to speak in this assembly. This assembly who has now to decide the survival or the death of my community. One of the world's worst humanitarian crises struggling for attention. De 3,5 millions de réfugiés fuient la violence et l'insécurité alimentaire. Los habitantes se encuentran sin salida, atrapados entre la sequía y el terrorismo. As the desert gains ground, can the vanishing lake and its people be saved? Chad as a country, it's a very vulnerable place. We are the door of the desert. Climate change impact more indigenous peoples than other communities because their life depends from the environment. The brook is our supermarket, it's our pharmacy. It's our energy. It is our water point. It's everything for us. And if this ecosystem is getting stained, that means our life is getting stained. So that's all the life of indigenous peoples everywhere in the world. But it's not good for us. Just a crazy thing. It's the same water that the cattle drink, that the people also drink. So the people have to go the other side around to get water. That's the shocking part. Climate change already is a big drama in our life, but it's impacted more women and children because those are using the first resources. It makes me so hungry for my people. Just to get this kind of water for drinking in this 21st century. Don't be on the one. This one, this not here. They have no other alternative for them life. Rande. And it's the women who are in charge of the food in the communities. When the milk is not enough, it's the women who sacrifice themselves by giving the food first to the children and the old people and the man before to eat the last. Those women are incredible solution makers. They cannot wait for the man to come back home after three or nine months to eat. They innovate, they found the water, they found everything to feed them children. By the time that man come back home, they already surviving. They are the survivor. They are the really keepers of the tradition and of the communities.
and that's why they are the best one who can build the solution. You cannot build the climate solution without including the women, without listening from the women. I own a lot to my peoples because I learned by independent women. They are the ones who make me yeah. I grow up between two lives. When I went to school with my mom, I stay in the city. And during each break of the school, I go back to my community. If I didn't want to school, I may have a different life. The guests of my age have not only kids, but they have a grandchildren already. Their life is really beautiful. They are enjoying their life because they have children, they have grandchildren but they cannot fight for all the communities. Going to school enable me to fight for indigenous peoples because I can understand what others are saying, what they are writing. I was really lucky because my mom is a brave woman who decided 10 years ago, fighting her own community and my father's community to send her girls to school. So, this is my mom. This mom. I admire her because she's my inspiration. She's my hero. Yes. Our hero. She's the one who tell me if you went to school, you can be the one who will defend the rights of others who are violent and how to live in harmony with our culture, our environment.
Monsieur le ministre, merci de nous avoir reçus en tant que ministre de l'Environnement et aussi euh, un nomade, si je peux me permettre, mon frère. C'est ce qu'on veut et puis on compte vraiment sur vous. Le couloir actuel, mmh. il date des années 50. Exactement. C'est-à-dire maintenant, il y a plus de villages qu'avant. Oui. Et là, bon, maintenant, on va essayer de délocaliser les mmh. couloirs de transhumance. Ah ben alors là, on, on travaillera ensemble dans ça pour voir qu'est-ce qui sera optimal pour les communautés. Les prix que j'ai, j'ai, j'ai gagnés sur l'environnement, moi, je les avais dit, je vais l'investir dans la cartographie de, de la région de tous les transhumants pour qu'ils puissent avoir une carte bien claire de leurs couloirs de transhumance. Et là, j'aimerais bien avoir votre accompagnement là-dedans. Merci beaucoup, monsieur le ministre. C'est moi, ça me réconforte. On a à l'extérieur mm. une vision de quelqu'un qui connaît le milieu oui. et qui ouais. peut nous dire ouais. que vous avez mal fait. Ouais. Ouais. Donc, c'est tout ça qui nous permettra, avec le temps, d'aller de l'avant et pour permettre à cette population qui souffre du changement mm. climatique. Mm. Merci beaucoup, monsieur le ministre. C'est moi qui vraiment. vous remercie. Je vous, je, je vous remercie énormément, toujours. solution peoples. Indigenous peoples protect 80% of the world biodiversity. As the earth is as big, indigenous peoples can fix it. Those traditional knowledge that we know from generations by living in harmony with the nature will be the world safe. Alaji Hamani, Kau Kam, from the Ummi Pat, Don Jorotto, Tema Dagababa, Kau, from the Ummi Do, and the Kamtopio Ben Jorotto. But we cannot fix it if our rights are not respected, if our land is not protected, if we do not access to these basic resources that we want to keep the balance in this nature. <laughs> Our knowledge are oral. We transfer our knowledge through generation. So that's why for us, if one of our elder person passed away, it's a library that you cannot recover. So one of the solutions for me is using the 3D participatory mapping. It's to use the memory of our ancestor to get recovered. The map is 100% built by the community with the science-based knowledge. Millions of people depend heavily on the natural resources of Lake Chad. Over the past 50 years, climate change has seriously impacted the region and the communities that depend upon it for water, leading to increasing conflict in the region. One solution? 
to bring pastoralists, farmers and community members together to share ancestral knowledge and spatial information as well as the challenges they face in order to create a shared tool that considers the needs of all. A participatory, three-dimensional map. This inclusive process allows everyone's voice to be heard and fosters common goals based on cultural identity and the need for sustainable management. Thanks to the models and maps created, community representatives and local authorities can understand the issues and make informed decisions that can help contribute to growth and conflict management. Yago, I'm Leuru Sali, do me give you the president on me. President Debbie on me give you the be Marco. Hunduk and be no fru Marco. A window on Yahan got on me, President Umrima. And got a be Lenolma. Mean do me four time we are me one latama. Turn up on what he put and got on and got on to me a week. So When I was a little girl, I'm always challenging myself to do something that the others, they didn't do. So, I was dreaming to drive a airplane to land it to my community and to tell them that it's possible. Even being a woman is possible, you can do it. I'm always telling them, do you think that I have a big muscles? I don't have them. But I have my brand. You can make yours work maybe better than mine. Go to school, and then you will be the master of your life. Okay. The nomadic pastoralists are the guardian of nature. For centuries, we live in harmony with Mother Earth. For us, we are all hiring this nature. We are not there forever. You can stay a hundred years, but one day, you will pass away and you need to leave this land to another generation that are coming. That's why we are using these resources on a very equitable way. For us, it is our way of life. That's why we keep this lifestyle. It's who we are. We used to live in harmony with the nature. But now it's becoming our enemy. Why are we getting this extreme?
extreme weather, even in developed countries. Because they do not respect the environment. They have to understand, as human beings, we are only one species of the nature. And if we are using these resources more than each other species, we are breaking the balance. And that's exactly what's happening now. So it's the time that they come and learn from our wisdom. The solution, we can found it only when we can live with this nature. The best engineer is nature. He can recover himself. So we must learn from it. This little ant, they are so important to predict the weather. When they come out, they start building them home. The year that they build it very up, that means the rain season will be very heavy with a lot of flood. And if they didn't build it up, that means the rain season will not be flooding them home. So this show us how we can move, how far we can go during the year. As long as we have the ants, as long as we have the flowers, the trees, the wind, we can continuously doing our prediction of weather and our planning for adaptation. But if we didn't combat the climate change, we will lose this knowledge. community when you have the first baby born you just stay in the place until the seven day celebration before to take up the camp and go to the next place Dada baby on finita This innocent angel coming this world. And then when you get people just to like polluted all this planet. For you, little baby, I will fight to keep this place.
is a poor country. We are the most impacted by climate change. We have 10 years to change it. 10 years is nothing. We need to act all together and we need to act right now. My people can't wait. They really not time. <laughs> in this summit in New York, I meet the General Secretary of the United Nations. I meet many important people who take the decision in this world. And I taught him that it's more difficult when you know people who are supposed to take the decision, who have to set up a new plan of development of the world, and who have this power to do it, who do not take it. My people back home struggling just to get water, fighting, killing each other to access the shrinking resources. In which planet are we? Are we really feeling the same emergency? We have to protect each other as one species of the nature. Environment crisis, climate crisis is a humanity crisis. Finally, they have to hear from us. I now would like to welcome to the lectern Miss Hindu Umaru Ibrahim from Chad. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, climate change is adding poverty to poverty every day. Migration is challenging for rich countries, but it's a tragedy for those who are left behind. For those women and children who have to stay and fight back consequences of climate change on their own. We fight for survival. In Paris, you give us hope, but now it's time to change your hope into promise. Excellencies, if you do not increase finance for adaptation, soon there will be no one to adapt. 